Hi, and welcome, Zara. Thank you so much for um, connecting and sharing your success story. Um, tonight is all about, um, yeah, championing you and you sharing some of the shifts and the changes that you experienced since we worked together. So as we said earlier, it's been, it was a year ago that we worked together and I think we worked together for six months. So tell me, um, what, where were you before you, you reached out to work with me? What was going on then for you? Yeah, um, well, it was actually my husband that introduced me to you. <laughs> um, so my husband, Cisco, was coming to see you um, for some help with his career and just changing his mindset. And then he, you know, thought that um, I could benefit from coming to see you. And so he actually recommended it and yeah, and then I just, you know, made that decision to come and chat to you. And I think you had just offered the, that free, um, what is it called? Your, the first session where you just yeah. kind of. Two session to make sure we're a good fit and to make sure I'm the right person to help you. Mm, very yeah. Nice. And then I just thought, yeah, this sounds like a really good um, opportunity to, you know, work on myself and yeah, decided to join. Yeah, because as I tell my clients, it's all about digging deeper into the mindset, which takes that first sort of step of courage. And then it's really about um, clearing out the patterns that you can't see, which is where I come in with my skills and helping you, you know, step into your awesome self and your potential even more. So tell me some of the challenges that you, you were facing or, or, or before you came to see me. Hmm. Some of the reasons. So um, the reason I think we both needed help is because we had just, you know, immigrated. So we had moved from South Africa to Australia and immigration is hard. It's, you know, it's such a huge change. You're just leaving everything you know and it's a new job. It's a new country. Everything's just new. And so we were both feeling a bit stressed, I think. Um, but with me, um, you know, it was more anxiety. Um, you know, I've always kind of struggled with a little bit of anxiety and moving, doing the big move to Australia, it just kind of made it that much worse. Mm. And so I think I was just kind of in the frame of mind of just being really anxious and stressed. And um, I was just being so hard on myself <laughs> and <laughs> was probably really angry. <laughs> um, so that's where I was when I came to you. Um, I remember you're one of my wonderful high achievers and high achievers tend to put a lot of pressure on themselves to perform and I think as we spoke about you'd um, had a lot of anxiety for a very very long time you'd done you know you'd done some courses and some work on it in the past um, but it was still there and I think moving here and the new job and the pressure you put on yourself was was really um, creating even more anxiety on my high achievers and I know one of the areas that we specifically worked on was you being kind to yourself which I think is something um, I have to help everybody and I had a gold medal in that one. Um, what else um, do you remember specifically during our work that was really helpful for you for your for the anxiety and, and um, the pressure you were putting on yourself? Yeah um, yeah so the the big light bulb moment was um, just, you know, learning to be kinder to myself. Um, that was, you know, one of the first things I kind of learned and I didn't realize how um, mean I was actually being to myself and how horrible I, <laughs> and hard on myself I was being. Um, oh yes, the other thing that you kind of taught me was that it's the small changes that actually make all the difference. And so sometimes when you're feeling so um, like desperate for help and you're just really in a bad place and you're wanting to improve your life, you're just expecting this big wow, you know, thing. And with you, it was definitely learning that it's the small, tiny changes that you make. And for example, like with me, it was just doing the home play that you gave me and, you know, just continuously keeping that up, even though it might sound like a small little thing where you're sitting down and writing down, you know, um, whatever you've suggested. It's, that's the kind of thing that I think really made a difference for me. Yeah. And, and I think um, in particular, like Alex, who I interviewed recently, oh, and Joe, you really committed to doing the extra work between 
the session so that you could work on clearing out the blocks, the patterns, a little bit of the perfectionism and the high achiever and the, the thoughts that was fueling the anxiety. And some of the tools and techniques I taught you, which we all know work, really helped you clean out um, a lot of the energy of the anxiety and full credit for you for really embracing them. And I guess it's why I love working with high achievers because they want successful and they usually do the extra in between that makes a difference. And I think mm. I've, we actually work together over a sustained longer period um, yeah. of six months. And I think for you in particular, it really helped you manage and, and literally overcome um, some mm. of the anxiety um, that you had had. Mm. So tell yeah, definitely. yeah, with the anxiety, um, you know, you, you, ha you had a new job, you had an exam to do. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me some of the great things that have happened since, um, yeah, during and since we worked together because you've had some incredible um, shifts and great things happening, haven't you? Yeah, so um, I had to write a few big exams. Um, you know, moving from a different country, you have to um, write exams and actually do oral exams and all these things to get accredited. And so I had some pretty major exams to get through and I have, you know, passed them. And that was a really big goal of mine and a, a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also just, I wanted to be more confident at work um, because I found that I was struggling a little bit with um, if, a, if a client was being confrontational or if, you know, I was just not feeling confident. And I do feel a lot more confident now. And I just wanted to kind of um, be successful at my job. Um, and I am the clinic, you know, we're 20% over target, you know, we, we're doing really, really well. Uh, so, I, you know, I set a lot of goals with you and they've all kind of, I've reached them all. <laughs> so it's good. Paul, do the, the, the latest ones. One thing I remember that um, you said you used to like to, be really organized at the weekend, didn't you? And, and sort of take control of everything, which meant that sort of eroded your fun and freedom at times. Um, and I think you completely shifted that as well. So how do you, you feel outside work now? Do you feel a lot more relaxed and... Um... Yeah, well, the, the horrible thing with anxiety is that when it's in control of you, um, it kind of just consumes you and um, you just are not able to you know, connect with people properly and you're so stressed the whole time that you're not able to have fun. So now that I am in control of the anxiety, um, I'm probably a lot more fun to be around and not such a control freak. And I do just feel like I can connect with people more. Um, mm. Yeah, I've got more energy as well to connect with people because I'm not exhausted. <laughs> Well, I think when we ran into each other the other day, you said, look, you haven't had any sort of overwhelming feelings of anxiety for a really long time, as if you just felt lighter and they just sort of shifted, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the anxiety that I have had or have, have, it's probably such a common anxiety, especially with young women. I think it's really, really common. And... Um, I don't know if it's because I'm a healthcare professional or if it's just because I really um, am interested in mental health, but I, you know, did go to psychologists before and I even tried the whole um, going on antidepressants because that's how they treat anxiety. They put you on antidepressants. So, you know, I've done the whole thing of going to doctors and trying tablets, going to psychologists. Um, and I felt like they were constantly just putting a band aid over the problem. And, um, you know, they definitely taught me a lot of things, but with you, it's the only time that I've ever felt like I've actually become in control of the anxiety. So obviously you can never just, you know, like get rid of it because it's part of my personality, but it no longer controls me. And so that's just such an amazing feeling. And that's so good. And I mean, really, you know, I, I, I know I, I, I do believe I'm, I'm great at what I do. However, it's also the tools that I use. I know they work, um, you know, they're backed by neuroscience, originally neuro-linguistic programming, neuroscience, and they actually help move the energy. So it's like we work at the source of the problem and yeah. because that's 
where we have to work. And, and I've seen similar type of results with so many people when we get down to the source. And I guess um, some people don't have the courage to take the first step or they don't know that there's other ways of managing it outside the traditional system. So it, it's so um, fantastic, you know, when I hear um, successes like, like you, you know, what a life transformation, not having all that anxiety anymore. Um, so mm -hmm. what else? There's a few other amazing things that you've achieved since we worked together. So you don't have to share that, I'm sure everyone. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, one of the other reasons that I wanted to come and work with you as well is because I knew that I wanted to be a mom one day. And I just was thinking, I can't or I don't want to be a mom if I'm so anxious. I don't want to be one of these chaotic, anxious moms. And I also don't want to make my child anxious. And so that was actually also one of the motivators for working on myself and getting myself more, you know, happy and, and calm. And um, then, you know, one of my goals became to um, get pregnant and you now I am. <laughs> I'm actually currently four and a half months pregnant. So that's another, you know, happy thing that's happened. <laughs> and, and how do you feel about, I mean, I'm sure, you know, there's always <gasps> scary moments, but how do you feel um, now approaching, you know, you're going to be a mother soon? Um, have you had much anxiety or you managed to um, overcome any? Yeah, so, um, you know, I was uh, a bit worried that maybe the anxiety would come back up again um, because they do actually, you know, the midwives and, and things that they do chat to you and say to you, anxiety actually is very common in pregnancy because of your hormones and everything that's changing. And you also just feel um, quite vulnerable when you're pregnant. And, and so I was actually wondering, oh, maybe I'm going to have to go work with Mandy again. <laughs> but I've been absolutely fine. I haven't felt anxious. Um, I've just been feeling really fine about it all and, and you know, kind of um, looking forward to it and excited. So that was really cool for me to experience that. Well, that's super. And I guess... Um, do you feel that you, you know, with the tools I taught you and the, and the techniques that you've got some tools and techniques to take with you to be an even more awesome mum? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the way I kind of think of it is um, you kind of planted all these little positive little seeds in my brain. <laughs> and so I am often thinking back to things that you said to me and it's kind of still going to blossom, I guess. So you know, I will constantly think back to things you taught me and I've got my book with all the tricks in it. And so I've got something to refer back to if I am, you know, feeling a bit anxious. Um, and I also wanted to say one of the other things I really liked with working with you is all the different techniques that you use, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not just um, talking. It's, you know, sometimes you're writing down things, sometimes you're brainstorming, sometimes you're doing a bit of a meditation or or a bit of a hypnosis like so I really liked all the different techniques and I think that's probably the difference that makes the difference you know some people have no idea uh, you know what what I do or, or how these tools works but I've, you know, I've got so many different tools in my tool bag that I'm, I'm I can pick the correct ones um, for every person and, and everyone's individual yet we all have common challenges and and the key obviously if anyone is wanting to change is that anxiety patterns um, beliefs things that are holding us back are invisible but they are like a, an intense feeling or a block that we just can't cross but we can't see it yet they're very powerful so the tools and techs art techniques i have help people clean out what they can't see and you can't really do that with anyone else you know no books really help you um, and the Thing, you know what, what is such the greatest gift is that you keep these tools forever you yeah. want to go back to where you were and then you've got them to share with others and most importantly yeah. the future generation which will be you know your 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 baby that's coming along soon and any other ones you have and, and I also applaud you both because I worked obviously with your husband Cisco first so now you've both got amazing tools you know and, and to me that's one of the greatest gifts so that you can keep shining your light and, and helping other people do the same yeah is that you shared some great things there is there anything else or, or that you 
that um, that you gain that's made a difference to you or, or that will for your yeah, it's really just that um, this will affect the rest of my life. So, um, you know, they talk about IQ and then EQ and emotional intelligence. And I believe that that's even more important than IQ. <laughs> um, it's just so, so important. And it's becoming more and more important with the way the world is changing. And I also feel like everything I learned with you has actually improved my emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And um, that is just so, so valuable. It's something that you will use for the rest of your life and in everything, whether it's at work or with your personal relationships, with your family relationships, being a parent, you know, so it's just absolutely invaluable. Yeah. And, and just to explain for other people listening, um, you know, we, we work very much on changing habits because habits shape our identity, yet we have habits of not only actions and behaviours, which we worked on, but habits of thought and feelings, which is our emotional state. So I work on all those areas, which, as you say, was, was what helped you make a great difference. And, you know, once we've changed, it's like, I guess, what are they, that saying about a a diamond that comes from coal, it can never go back to coal. You know, you, you will never go back to where you were. You, you know, you've used and embraced the tools and the techniques. You've disciplined your mind muscle. You've connected the three intelligences that I also work with this head up here, the heart intelligence and the gut intelligence. So, you know, literally you've got tools to align everything um, and to step forward and, and, even more, you know, you've passed exams, you've done fantastically well. You've also um, bought a house, um, you're now I... <laughs> over here and you've got a family. So that is the most wonderful story. And I know we, we keep connected at Park Run, which we, we go to um, yes. with as well. So um, just lastly, some people will invest in their cars and their external world, yet so many people don't realise that their greatest investment is their own personal growth and development. So from your experience, we've heard that it, that it was great, but, um, you know, what would you say to someone that was thinking about investing in themselves and, and a little bit hesitant? What would your advice be, Zara? Yeah, well, if I had to go back to how I was feeling or a year and a half ago or whatever, um, I would just say, I mean, you've got to do it. It's, it's so, so worth it. It's, um, it doesn't matter if, you know, you've got a lovely holiday you're going on and then driving a nice car. It, none of that matters if you're not feeling happy. And um, so you've got to get your mind right first before you can really, truly enjoy life and live to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And if you get your mind right and invest in yourself, <laughs> Um, what people I think don't always realize is that you actually kind of, if you spend some money investing in mental health, you'll actually get that money back in the future because you'll end up being more successful, right? Which means you'll probably earn a higher salary, you know? And so you are, yeah, it's just really important, I think. That, and I think the world of change, you know, where there is so much change, something most humans don't like because we're hardwired to be kept safe and comfortable and avoid change, which is danger, is that we have to future-proof ourselves for whatever's going on. And, and our greatest asset truly is with ourselves. If we step into a, a new job or a new environment, but we're coming from that same person, we're not going to be equipped. Um, and I guess the easiest analogy is it's like rechanging some of the software in, a, in our you know, operating system from stuff that we've had since we were very young, that no longer serves us. So, um, yeah, as you say, investment in oneself is is invaluable. So if anyone's, you know, thinking about it, um, yeah, hey, listen to um, Zara's great story and know it's absolutely possible, possible for you to. I see it frequently every day. Um, and it's just sharing it and letting people know that, hey, there are ways and don't look at the external world all the time, but, you know, take the time to invest in your own growth and grow. And, and once again, thank you so much um, for sharing your story. It's just it's heartwarming and it makes me, you know, it inspires me every day when I, I hear such fantastic stories from my clients because I'm your, like the catalyst and your guide and you did the extra work. So all 
kudos for you for, for really committing and completely, you know, overcoming anxiety, which as you said, can be crippling and had crippled you in the past. And I'm sure it cripples many people. So here's to your next chapter in life. Our motherhood and we look forward to the next adventures yeah in the journey and and i wish you and cisco all the very best and once again a sincere thank you for sharing your story and i hope it inspires someone else to believe in themselves and know that they can change their patterns um, and they find the, that right path. So thank you yeah. so and thank you i mean i can't thank you enough for you know everything you've done for me um you know, um, working with anxiety can be so, so, so scary. And I think half the time people are probably scared to come work with you because they're scared they're going to have this huge panic attack in your office and <laughs> look like an absolute psycho. But um, I never, ever felt like that once. Um, you know, there's times that I've tried to talk to doctors about it and I would have like a panic attack in their office and I just couldn't talk. Um, whereas with you, I just felt really safe and really at ease. And so that's just another thing that, you know, if anybody's kind of feeling really scared, they're just really, they don't have to be. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank I, you so much. And it's just awesome that, you know, no more panic attacks ever for you. So thank you once again. I, I sincerely appreciate it, Sarah. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mandy.